This is What the Spot, a podcast where we read and talk about paranormal erotica novels. I think you mean paranormal romance novels? How about some of both? So you don't have to. Today on What the Smut, we will be talking about Cowboy Wolf Trouble by, by Kate Ballinger. A wolf shifter romance like you've never seen before. Cowboys by day, wolf shifters by night. The clan of secret wolves lies just beyond the mountains, and a world filled with intrigue and possibility is closer than you think. For centuries, the shifters that roam Big Sky Country have honored a pact to keep the peace. Even bad boy rancher Wes Calhoun, former leader of a renegade pack, has given up his violent ways and sworn loyalty to the Grey Wolves, but his dark past keeps catching up with him. Human rancher Naomi Evans only cares about saving the land that was her father's legacy. Until the day she finds an injured wolf on her ranch and discovers a whole new world, a supernatural world on the verge of war, and Naomi, her ranch, and the sexy cowboy wolf stealing her heart are right in the middle of it. Now I remember this book. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Is that a pretty good synopsis? Sure. Yeah. The injured wolf thing is a little misleading because technically he was in a trap. <laughs> that her brother said. So he wasn't just happened to be injured, but he was actually intentionally injured. Mm-hmm. True. And yeah. technically, they're not just wolf shifters by night, because like they talk about being able to shift at any moment, right? I guess that adds some mystery, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's don't it's- quit your day job. <laughs> 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 I'm in the mood tonight. I like it. (laughs) I like it a lot. (laughs) All right. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about our hero, Mr. Wes Calhoun, the the very former leader of a renegade pack. What do you guys think of Wes? I picture him a lot older than I think he is. Mm. Because he is finally letting up his ways. That's... Something all fogies do. <laughs> True. I think I, I think I thought of him as like probably late twenties, early thirties. That was kind of my. Yeah, I figure early thirties. Mm-hmm. Can you I go into a lot of shit before then? Thirty-five. Yeah. We'll call it thirty-five. Okay. You can make some trouble before you're thirty-five. <laughs> you sure can. Imagine how many people by the age of thirty-five are in and out of prison several times. Yeah. True. So I had mixed feelings about Wes. Um, There was parts in the book where I really loved his character, almost like swooned over him in some of the ways that he, in part of his personality. And then there was other points where I just wanted to like shake him and be like, get over yourself. Yeah. Get over yourself. But I mean, I guess that's like the typical male sometimes. (laughs) Um. I didn't really like that he was like, oh, I'm so broken all the time. Like, he felt so bad for himself. I was like, I'm so broken. I'm so broken. I'm like, again, get over yourself. Um, mm-hmm. But I think all around, I really liked him. I agree. I think they don't talk a lot in the book about his past. I mean, we get snippets. He was so bad. He was this and was that. But they never really talk about anything bad he actually did. Right. So if he was so bad, mm, you don't really see it from what they just what um, the author describes as the things in his past that he's done. And at the end, they kind of say, oh, that really, really bad thing that they've been hinting at all the time. It really wasn't him after all. He just (laughs) feels really bad about it, (laughs) which was frustrating. Yeah, it was it was like the whole super guilt trip that he like he was he felt i think that at one point in the book that she says like or he says um when somebody in the human world murders someone they get put in jail here you become an alpha yeah and i guess that was like him saying like i feel bad for what i did blah 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 but at the same time i'm just again i'm like dude nobody else gives a shit why do you (laughs) just get over it it's what you do but Whatever. I thought he was hot. I thought he was hot as fuck. Yeah, I did think he was hot as fuck, but he was very conflicted and hot and cold. Whiny. I just oh, didn't whiny. enjoy the whiny. The whiny internal monologue was just like, enough. 
get this chick in bed and shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Like, I felt like it was, his character is pretty inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Like, so like, he's very kind, but he's also very alpha. And he did a terrible thing. And I didn't, I felt like the inconsistencies didn't allow me to get like a grasp on the character in my brain. And it could just be my funky brain, but, but I feel like it wasn't super consistent. And then also, yeah, I agree with you, Karen, like, gosh, like get over yourself. I had some issue. I had some trouble like with this book. Um, I had, I read it twice and I am still having problems telling you what, what it's even about. Um, and I think part of it is because usually when you read a book, even if it's in the third person, you get the internal monologue of one person. Yeah. And here we got internal monologues of different people. Wes feels like this. And then Naomi feels like this. And I think that was like a little difficult for me to kind of grasp onto. It's interesting to the way you're talking about them shifting perspectives of who is who we're hearing from, who's our internal monologue we're hearing from, because I didn't find it confusing. I actually found it um, delightful because during one sex scene back and forth, you could get one chapter, not even a chapter, one paragraph you hear like, this is where he is and what he wants. And then here's what, where she is and what she wants. And I really loved that having both perspectives on the same situation. And you don't get that often. And I felt like it was, I felt like it was really well done. I can see what you're saying that would be um, confusing, but I was really wrapped up in both of the characters. So maybe like that was just something that I rolled with, but I can see how it would be annoying because when you do change from character to character chapter Mm -hmm. to chapter i always forget to read at the top of each chapter whose (laughs) perspective it is yeah me too right (laughs) (laughs) so at least in this the the author kate was very clearly saying naomi thought or you know wes did or i i totally get what you're saying but i also enjoyed that aspect i found it frustrating i was like geez we're switching again Um, (laughs) right but I think it was done a little bit better than other books we've read. As an author, it has to be something really hard to tackle to have more than one perspective um, of a certain situation and keep it um, timely. Like I've Mm -hmm. read books where they'll go through a whole sequence of events in one person's perspective. And then the next chapter is that same damn sequence events and somebody else's perspective. And I hate that. Yeah. Mm. Like, so I, I think if you want both people's or, or several characters perspective, it's just probably a really hard thing to tackle. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen or read a great way to do it. I don't know. I feel like it, it's hard either way. Like if you, I must like, I do not write fiction. I cannot, it's terrible. It's so bad. Um, but like, I can imagine if you know your characters, like when you write, you like know your characters, you know what they're feeling, but mm-hmm. it's gotta be difficult to write like from one person's perspective. Like if person A and person B and person B is who, who you're writing the story from this perspective, you have to have the audience figure out how, well, how person A is feeling by what person B is thinking. And that right. has to be so frustrating. I can't even imagine. So this seems like it would be better. Like maybe, maybe if I did this, I could write a book. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's just, it just um, yeah. Like it just seems like it had, it has to be difficult no matter what. Absolutely. Ugh. I mean, I kind of like how Wes is complicated in the I'm an alpha and I'm also broken and don't feel like I can let people close to me and and don't feel like I'm good enough for anybody kind of thing. Like, I'm the best, but I'm also not good enough. I, I get that. Like, I totally felt like that was realistic and justifiable for someone who's t- been told his entire life as this pack person that he's one thing and then he goes to this other pack and he's being told that as that thing he was his whole life, he was bad. I can see it. But then also taking a step down from being an alpha to answering to an alpha. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So what about his 
paramour Naomi Evans. What do we think about Naomi? Poor girl. I liked her sassy ass. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I love, first of all, that she is, and, you know, I think we first talked about this, like, way back in episode, like, five or six or something like that, in Academy of Six. She is not a skinny little white girl. Yay! (laughs) Yes. She's, She's got some history. You know, she has been out in the world. She went to college. She went to Florida. She went to California. Uh, She's a person of color. She is Native American. She doesn't really know exactly what she wants. She's doing something that she doesn't necessarily know that she wants. I like that complication of her character as more mature woman. Um, I really, really liked that. And like Karen said, I love her sassy ass. (laughs) (laughs) It was really neat to watch her figure herself out Mm -hmm. in the process of the book. Yeah, for sure. There's that moment when um, they're not even doing anything and it's just kind of a, uh, it's like a work day and they have, they're working and they have lunch and she's like, this is what I want. This is the kind of world and life that I want where she, I felt like she kind of finally understood why she was hesitant to take over her father's ranch. Like it talks about in the synopsis. And I think I really connected to her at that moment because when she was talking about, she didn't want to be a rancher, but now she's a rancher. I was like, then don't be a rancher. Go, (laughs) go to your thing, like whatever. Um, So it was kind of hard for me to understand, but that moment made it really clear to me. I think it was Mm well-written. Yeah. Obligations of life. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll talk about it later, but I love that she could, like kept trying to run away. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Because I'm, I'm going through it right now and I'm like, uh, okay, oh, she's on the run. Two, three chapters <laughs> later, oh, she's running ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and then we come to my favorite character of the entire book. Blackjack. <laughs> the stallion i like the sassy ass <laughs> <laughs> not quite broken he not quite broken he's kind yeah. of broken he'll let you ride him if mm-hmm. that's particularly what he wants at that moment <laughs> yeah yeah he's tame enough to ride at some point on his terms but not when you want it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a character and i didn't put it in the notes below but when he gets into that kind of fight with the uh, the cat. <laughs> <laughs> the cat named Peaches and him have a like war going on. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really funny. She's like trying to be all sweet with this cat and he's like, nope. <laughs> what does he say? Something like, get that devil out of here. <laughs> I feel like this whole book kind of played out, played out as a very like Hallmarkish movie. Yes. And, agreed. And, agreed. And that, I really that liked it, though. I really liked it. I mean, ve- very much like, oh, she has nowhere to go. And it's like she meets this guy who's not really like emotionally available, but he's going to fall for her and mm-hmm. this and that. And then they have like the weird cat and horse thing happen. <laughs> and she falls on her ass and then he picks her up and it's Roman. I mean, it was very hallmark but it was, it, it, I, I loved it. Instead of having a best friend, he has a horse. Horse can be a best friend. So uh, let's talk about uh, Maverick, who is the alpha and kind of the whole gray wolf pack that Wes ends up going to after he leaves his renegade pack. What do you guys think about Maverick? and then the gray wolves i think he is a good alpha though stubborn which (laughs) i imagine is normal for an alpha he's not rash or anything so um i think i think he was a good character i think he was a little bit different than a lot of the alpha alphas that we see in books like this um because usually Mm -hmm. the alpha alphas they're like strong but They have like a heart of gold and they just want to like protect people and love them, but like still be strong. And this guy is just like, I'm just a regular fucking alpha. Like I'm here to protect the pack. Don't fuck with me. You do you. Um, There, I mean, and you know, the end you kind of like, okay, like 
you see a little bit of that, but there isn't like a whole lot of understanding, which is what we see a lot of the alpha alphas. Like I'm super strong, but I'm understanding. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, I agree with that, that he didn't like immediately show his compassion, especially for Wes and especially for Naomi or even really any of the other wolves or anyone under his care. He wasn't a compassionate leader. And I felt like we were intentionally misled by the author in his stubbornness. He doesn't drive cars because he doesn't like them. <laughs> he, takes, he takes his horse everywhere. Like I, I felt like we were intentionally misled into believing that he was like my way or the highway a thousand percent, whether or not it's the good of the pack. To make it such a huge turnaround for him kind of at the end for the story. And I I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. I know. I think throughout the book, it showed his compassion. I mean, he didn't kill Wes. He took him into his um, pack, even though this is an alpha that in every right could challenge him, but also has this supposed awful background to not just make him pay for that, but um, he let him into the pack, granted on the outskirts not part of the core of the pack, but he still accepted him. So I think that shows compassion near the, not the beginning of the book, but the beginning of that where we first meet Maverick. Yeah. I didn't really think of it that way. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Because if like he could have just eliminated him, whether or not he came and put himself at his mercy, Mm -hmm. he could have just been like, okay. And you're gone. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) And now we have to never have to worry about that again. He gave him an important job, like the the stallions and all of that. And he had a a decent place to live. And like he was friends with Colt, who is essentially his second in command. So he wasn't really all that ostracized from the pack. So, yeah, I think you're right. Still stubborn nonetheless. Oh, yeah. Man won't get in a car. (laughs) <laughs> when when they first introduced Maverick, I automatically thought he was going to have an alliance with the vampires. Oh. I, I was like, he's, obviously there's history. They're going to have, you know, mm-hmm. he, he's going to like be, what's the word? Not nice. Obviously, he wasn't very nice when he talked to um, Wes on that first, you know, I could kill you. You know, he did the whole mom thing. I brought you here and I could take you out. (laughs) Um, Like, I was like, it's going to be the plot twist that he's in on it. And like throughout the book, like I was waiting for that. (laughs) I was waiting for him to be like, well, ha ha. I'm in with the vampires and you guys didn't even know. Speaking of the vampires, that totally threw me for a loop. Because I've read other books and series where, you know, shifters and vampires and, you know, they were integrated into the storyline. But you're going along, then all of a sudden there's vampires. It was just like (laughs) so out of left field. It really threw me off for the rest of the book because really you didn't need the vampires. You have the betrayal within the other animal packs, you know? Yeah. And I don't know. that, That really put me off. I agree with you. For me, like the whole drama of this book, the war and the whatever was almost a throwaway. <laughs> Which is yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The this, this storyline was definitely not about a war coming. It was definitely about falling in the two falling in love. Yay. The character I have on here is Austin, who is the doc of the Wolf Grey Pack, and he is from Texas. Now, the next three characters I have on here, I haven't read any further in the series, but I'm just foreshadowing assuming that these next three characters are going to be the next three that fall in love with someone probably i like to like in every group there has to be someone that puts you at ease Mm -hmm. and i think that's a really important trait for a doctor yeah it really is it really is so i think that was a good character yeah he seems to be the calm one like the one that calms everybody down and you know kind of brings everybody back to like earth when things get a little bit crazy i liked him I, I again i agree with you guys that he was like very much like the calm one and like definitely a doctor but the 
only thing that I could say about Austin is that if I've learned anything in the last few months is to not talk to Texans about Texas. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> You're always wrong. <laughs> that whole dinner part where they're like, and he's she like he started talking about Texas. I was like, oh shit, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm a terrible girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so when they introduce Austin, he comes in to remove a bullet from Wes's shoulder, right? Mm-hmm. And he was at the barn, like with the other animals and stuff. He had his medical bag. Why the fuck waste whiskey? <laughs> if you are a medical professional, uh, see, this is a part that threw me off like early on because they talk about how like they have like a, a control center for if like they went to war or if anything happened. They have, I mean, it's modern day America. And if you have access to veterinary medicine for your animals, you have like antiseptics and all this other stuff why the fucking whiskey like whiskey is not a cure-all just because it's a western themed thing doesn't <laughs> mean that you use whiskey so maybe he's just very disorganized and maybe you know west isn't used to having actual doctor's help so his well, idea of wound cleaning is whiskey but, <laughs> but like austin asked like he's like oh did you forget the antiseptics at the barn or whatever did you need to go back he's like oh, i figured you needed the whiskey well, why not bring both <laughs> <laughs> if you're running through the forest and you got a bullet in you and you've like sweaty and gross and muddy and shit like whiskey's not gonna cut it you need some antibiotics you need even if you're a werewolf like come on i agree whiskey's expensive but it does give us some insight into wes's character (laughs) he's not gonna forget the whiskey but he is gonna forget the antiseptic yeah we don't want him by the childbirth bed (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you the whiskey is two for one, you can clean wounds with it and you can anesthetize. And you can clean your <laughs> toilet with it too, but that doesn't mean you should. <laughs> Agreed. But also, whiskey has sugar in it, right? So, like, it's probably not the best to Definitely clean. Like, if it was that. vodka with something like a white liquor, I would say that over a brown liquor. For sure, that would be yeah. better. Austin from Texas should um, stick to antiseptic for wounds and you know whiskey for other things is he the one with the awful hawaiian shirts from california or something no was that, that was blaze yeah that okay blaze the meathead bro <laughs> blaze the bro from silicon valley i loved the whole like very weird combination of traits that kate ballinger put into this character because he's a techie he's a bro he's got the loud hawaiian shirts and he used to work in Silicon Valley. And all of those things don't really combine in my brain. Not not cohesively until you read this guy. So what do you guys think of him? I did the Amanda thing this time around. <laughs> so I was like, Austin's from Texas. And, you know, Colt is, um, well, Colt the gun. So he's like the military guy. And Blaze is the bro. Blaze the bro. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like he was going to be making TikToks while he was like... Of the top secret room in the wolf den place. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Probably so. Mm -hmm. I thought he was kind of an ass, and then he turned out to be kind of a good guy. So I have mixed emotions about him. I'm not quite sure how I feel. Yeah. Uh, The thing I really liked about him, because I had no feelings one way or another about him until Wes busts in his little like techie office and it's like, I need to know this and I need to know it right now. And he's all like, okay, I want a favor. And Wes is like, oh, right. What do you want? And he's like, no, no, some (laughs) undisclosed favor from the future. And I was like, I like you, Blaze. (laughs) He's smart. He's a very smart bro. That Mm -hmm. is clever. And it's like, to me, it meant that Blaze in a way knows that Wes isn't disposable in the way that Wes thinks he's disposable. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. like it just meant Mm -hmm. a lot to me. Like it told me a lot about blaze. It told me a lot about Wes and it told me a lot about like, because I feel like blaze knows everything that's going on as far Mm -hmm. as what anybody knows. He knows everything that everybody knows. So he 
gave me some insight that nobody else could really give me. Mm-hmm. The thing with Blaze, though, like, I kind of want to see his closet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like, wondering, like, you're in, like, middle of Montana. Where do you shop? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you, you, you can check. You just shops online. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, there you go. You shop online. Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he ever touches the cattle. Because they're cattle ranchers, right? Calf ranchers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He probably never gets out of his little room. Probably. So he definitely eat. carries hand sanitizer. <laughs> and then, uh, like Karen mentioned, the last of the three is Colt. He is the Grey Wolf High Commander. And from what I understand, he's been with them like his whole life. Grew up with them, whatever. What do y'all think of him? He's the poster board kid for what the wolves are supposed to be, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you follow mm-hmm. orders and you do what you're told and that is the end of it. I liked his character as far as like the idea of like he's you know, he's the guy that everybody should tr- can trust to do what he's told or whatever. But at the same time I felt kind of bad about that. Like it made it so I felt I I I mean I guess I did feel sorry for him because I felt like what's beyond that like would he be able to Mm -hmm. survive outside of the pack and be his own person outside of the pack Mm -hmm. um i feel like he was very happy with his life and where he was like he thrived on it but i wondered if he would like be able to just venture out on his own and do his own thing and become his own person or if that was it for him you know and i i love the way they take the character just for those reasons, because in the beginning, you're very, very sure that that's who he is. And in the end, we're not. And we'll probably talk mm-hmm. about that more later. But yeah, yeah, when he helped Wes, I was like, oh, boy, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Think for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, I felt the same way as Karen. I was like, but just I would really like him to see to be able to like grow into his own person. Yeah. Well, when he goes out, um, and works the horses with Wes and Naomi because we yeah. don't really talk about that much but that like really showed him as a softer dude and I liked but that too but he also goes oh Colt like the gun not the horse and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> just in very, case you didn't know very dudely of him <laughs> yeah, I think they all had that very like dude bro thing going on for mm-hmm. a bit but you probably can't be uh, in a wolf pack cowboy situation without at some point having that, having to flop your dick out on the table and determine who has Oh, we the had that whole conversation too. So the next kind of set of characters is Donnie, who is now the alpha of the Wild Eight, which is the renegade pack aforementioned that Wes used to be the alpha of. So let's talk about those lovely guys. <laughs> I kind of got the impression that he's not really the alpha until Wes is dead. Like he's kind of running things, but he's not really the alpha. Wes is still the alpha trader. So until one's dead, the other can't mm. take full control or take the, the title. That's an interesting perspective. I like it. And I think he like he knew that himself as well. And I mm-hmm. think that was like his major like his biggest fear kind of. Mm-hmm. Like he knew that until Wes was dead, he would not have that full control. And he would right. not be fully in charge. And there was a threat to his authority until Wes was dead. I totally got that as well. Yeah, yeah it was pretty clear to me that he was overcompensating <laughs> for something. Like, it's just doing too, like, too much. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see that, too. And the whole concept of the Wild Eight or this, like, renegade pack, once you start, like, listening to some of the rules of pack life, I kind of get why there's a renegade pack. I can see why they would be like, yeah, we're not going to be beholden to that set of rules. That also doesn't mean that you have to become... What, what I think they say so many times, not much different than a street gang. Murderers and thieves. Yeah. You don't have to go that far. And then the final kind of player is Quinn and the execution underground. 
yeah, these people threw me off, like, with the vampires. It just seems so out of place. Yeah. You just get so little about them. It's just like we need this other player. I felt like like this other player mm-hmm. kind of tossed in the mix. And then there's a bartender with magic. <laughs> I liked that part, but <laughs> it's so random, inconvenient. I I agree. I feel like with other books, sometimes we have some more like I don't I don't know, not really maybe like world building, but like kind of explaining like there is some sort of background. It is mentioned somewhere at some point before it's immediately in the middle of the book it's like oh there's this thing by the way and or like oh yeah we we had a vampire problem on the ranch a million years ago and now like vampire like there's like there it's not just like boom vampires boom <laughs> execution <laughs> underground boom like yeah. you know out of nowhere like i think i would have liked some explanation and like to kind of not even foreshadowing, but just like, let me know that this is an actual thing before it becomes like a huge plot point. Well, and the way that it would have worked for those things to just be boom, here it is, is if the entire book had been from Naomi's perspective, because from Mm -hmm. Naomi's perspective, it would have been everything. Boom, here it is. No need to tell her anything until she's smack dab in the middle of it, because she doesn't know about the supernatural underworld. But going back to the thing we were talking about before, when we're reminiscing about Wes's past and mm-hmm. we're talking about the, you know, uh, wild eight being nothing more than a street gang criminals and murderers. That's a great time to bring up that bar. It's a great time to, when we're talking about the pact, it's a great time to say, Oh, you know, the vampires, aren't part of this and it's part of why we do this thing or the execution underground is why we have this pact, Mm -hmm. you know, like all of those times would have been great times when Wes or Maverick or anybody was talking about that. So I'm, I totally get you. I think a good time to have introduced those other races, I guess, magical races um, would have been soon after she found out there are werewolves like, after she got over that initial shock, if Wes was like, oh, yeah, there's vampires and magic, too. And just kind of threw it out there casually, so at least there would be some idea that there's a the world out there. But he did say, and I thought this was weird, he did say almost every magical creature that you've heard of or th- can think of actually exists. Yeah, I was going to. He did say That's that. That's cryptic. And he said that while she was in shock, so we were all in shock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that just means, like, it opens up to everything. Oh, yeah, and yeah. everything's real. <laughs> By the way, everything's real. <laughs> just in case you wanted to know, everything's real. So when we bring up flying turnips, that's real. That's I know, I thought he was being sarcastic when he said that. Oh. <laughs> I, I really didn't think he meant, meant it, but I, I don't excuse it as, I don't excuse it. I'm and that set me up for thinking that the orange, the tabby cat was like some kind of like Ooh, crazy something. fucking something. <laughs> Not just an angry cat. And it turns <laughs> out it was just a cat. With I thought a it was going to be like the crazy old grandma that was like, <laughs> I don't head. know. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's a cat shifter vampire. A cat shifter grandma something or other. <laughs> I love it. A little too old and a little too deranged. (laughs) There's nothing better to do than to terrorize the horse. (laughs) Sounds like to kind of terrorize everyone from the the sound of that. (laughs) No, I would totally terrorize the horse. (laughs) Jack Black, I would totally terrorize him. Except for when he's being helpful. Oh, yeah. Go to whatthesmut.com and tell us who you would fuck, marry, and kill. We will share your votes when we record our next Fuck, Mary Kill episode. Karen's wish is our command. We finally created that I'm the Slutty Best Friend merch. You can get a t-shirt, you can get an awesome sticker, and so many other really cool things. Check it out over on whatthesmut.com. Um, the first thing that I put on the book discussion is animal trap and kidnapping. How's that for a meet cute? <laughs> so 
Let's talk about it. <laughs> First of all, I had to look at Meet Cute because this is like the probably the fifth time in like three days that I've seen this, like on the internet, anywhere. So I was like, okay, I guess this is the time that I have to like learn what that is. <laughs> and it is a cute meet. So that makes sense. <laughs> Context clues. Uh, it's the rom-com thing, right? Like, yeah. how do you... Devil in distress. Although it wasn't her in distress, it was technically mm -hmm. him. As cute as this whole thing developed into... Um, <laughs> I don't particularly think of hollowed trees as a place where I would want to get it on because bugs and dirt and grossness and spiders and mm -hmm. I love like I, I love the forest. I love camping. We don't want to get fucked under a tree like that. Sorry. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> My issue was hiding from your enemies. Let's right. get it all in. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you're going to die, you might as well get laid, right? Why not? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. That entire thing, it kind of took me so much by surprise. Because first of all, I think the first time I read the scene, I was like, wait a minute, they're under a tree. How is that really hiding? Because I didn't really get that they were in a hollowed out tree. And then I reread it and I was like, wait, they're in a hollowed out tree and their enemies are looking for them. And they're okay. so lucky that they have found this tree random <laughs> fucking tree that fits two people true that's a good and point and it turns really sexy really fast which is interesting interesting so she's trapped him in a trap she's accused him of eating her livestock and he's kidnapped her and she's tried to run away and then they hide in a tree and then they start grinding <laughs> and then they get all primal with each other fuck yeah yeah like i my note says like i literally i highlighted that part i said well this escalated very quickly <laughs> like it went from like we're hiding in a thing and then she fell into the destruction before her into him and the carnal desire between them did, th did he growl at her i can't remember but it would have been so hot if he growled at her yeah i agree <laughs> i assume a purring growl rumbled deep in his throat that noise alone would leave her wanting for days <laughs> there you go. i am personally personally exploring that whole primal kink thing so i was like fuck yeah i Yes, I've been like reading a lot on primal kinks and stuff and kind of exploring that. So that was kind of hot and interesting. And I still wouldn't fuck in a tree like that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the growl was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I loved that scene. And it's a really long scene. I think it's like two full pages of them frolicking in the woods yeah. <laughs> like from the the part where they start to like notice how close they are and whatever to the part where they're practically grinding and making well they are grinding and making out it's like two pages i was like rock and roll let's do this <laughs> and it didn't happen but it's a it's a darn good way to start <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was a good edging for sure <laughs> yeah unfortunately then um they get out of the tree and he goes off to find blackjack who distracted the kidnappers and she gets attacked by a wolf oops just can't win and there was a great visual with um wes coming back and saving her from the wolf yeah it, very I, I i really enjoyed how it was very like movie like written <laughs> it was it was I, like i just think that the especially the the steamy scenes or the sex scenes are very visceral in this novel i like it a lot <laughs> and then she goes in the shock i love that <laughs> i love it all of a sudden she's like i don't get it like what like she goes in the shock and she's just like out of it i love that because <laughs> I can totally it, see people doing that. <laughs> exactly. And he finally in like from there, she's kind of a lot more pliant for at least the day of being kidnapped. She doesn't try to run away again after he's just saved her life. <laughs> for like yeah. a minute. So then he takes Naomi back. They they have their time where he's kidnapping her and <laughs> she's trying to run away over several days. 
we won't go into all that <laughs> because there's so many times. Um, but then he has to take Naomi back to the pack and he gets his um, ass handed to him. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> for, time out. for like, cause he left without permission. He wasn't supposed to do what he did and all of that. So let's talk about that part where he takes Naomi back to the pack and he gets his, his comeuppance. So I'm sure you have all seen The Lion King. Yeah. 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 Um, you deliberately disobeyed me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how dare you leave without my permission? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's where I, like, I, I realized that um, Maverick was very much like almost a father figure mm-hmm. um, at some point, you know. But it, I was just like, this is such a like Lion King scene. Do not go into the spots <laughs> with the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> the part I like about that is that his punishment is essentially you don't get to have anything to do How with the fucked up is that? <laughs> yeah, that's awful. He brings good intelligence, and no, you're out. But I mean. Honestly, if you really want to punish someone, that is the perfect punishment yeah. for someone like Ken. It's a great deterrent. Do you really think someone's going to actually follow that punishment? I mean, no. really. I Not mean, a guy like him. No. Yeah, maybe if an alpha person said that, because it, like, it really is a real deterrent. Like, you know, like, oh, you wanted to do this so bad and you wanted to be involved? Yeah, you messed up. You don't get to be involved. No, I'm mm-hmm. taking your door off your room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no snackies for you. I, I don't know. I thought that the punishment was just very. It was perfect, but at the same time, it was like, like you said, like dealing with a teenager. And... Yeah. So I thought the punishment was ingenious, but you're right. It's never actually going to work because, just like me, Wes just does whatever the fuck he wants and just sneaks around instead. But in that moment, it was perfect. It taught him that lesson in that moment. Like, you want to fuck around? You want to break curfew? You want to leave without permission? Yeah, that was like a bitch slap. You are cut off from this issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That means so much to him. That is like everything to him. It was pretty big. Pretty yeah, big. I liked it. And babysitting the human. <laughs> Which, uh, maybe not so much of a punishment she's your problem whatever <laughs> he's like I'll make her my problem <laughs> <laughs> now that Naomi's his problem he takes her to the uh, the, meal buffet. <laughs> the buffet yeah. the buffet the chow hall <laughs> yeah the chow mess hall the mess hall there you go um, and Naomi gets into a knife fight with a werewolf <laughs> what'd you guys think of that where the fuck did this ninja Naomi come yes. from? Yes! <laughs> 100%. I'm all, the fuck? Like, Again, plot point, boom. Like, random. At the end of that scene, I was like, she's just gonna, like, smack him on the forehead. Don't do that. She's <laughs> <laughs> smack him on the nose. Where the fuck did I come from? <laughs> Spray him with some water. <laughs> I mean, it is entirely badass that she has these skills. I like that it says, most would have thought to jump away from the blade, but she, Naomi had clearly been trained in basic self-defense. And then she beats his ass. Like, that's not basic, basic. self-defense. Uh, no. <laughs> that's ass-kicking fucking something. <laughs> like, that basic self-defense is like, here's an elbow to the face and then I run away. But, like, no, basic self-defense isn't, like... Disarming and slamming him down? No. Like, I don't know anything, obviously, about fighting yeah. <laughs> discipline. But, like, I like the fact that she gets all pissy and she's like, coward, I'm half your size and you need a knife. Which is so true. And I liked her, like, at that moment because I liked that she was badass. But I also was like, where the fuck did this come from? Like, You know where this came from? Cobra okay. Kai. <laughs> <laughs> they had two and now she can kick ass. After they have that day that we talked about a little bit earlier where they're working, they both go out and work and they herd um, the stallions. They're in the barn. Barn. The barn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's exactly where we are. The barn chicken, barn cow scene. They've done their thing and they're back in the barn. It's a downpour. 
the horse and the cat went crazy, <laughs> like we already talked about. And they're covered in shit, and it just so happens to start raining, which is great. Which is helpful, it's helpful. for what comes next. <laughs> they, they get wet, and he pulls out some extra clothes that he has laying around in the barn. Also helpful. We have another hot scene. What do you guys think of the barn scene? I couldn't imagine having sex on a pile of hay. That'd be so pokey. Very pokey. 100%. But it was hot as fuck, too. So there was that. It's very passionate. They they didn't have PIV sex. It counts. Oh, it count totally it. counts. <laughs> I count that. She has an orgasm. And then he leaves. <laughs> Which is kind of the opposite of how it usually happens. Because usually it's he has an orgasm and then he leaves. I'm just not okay with the leaving. <laughs> yeah. I'm so I, I've, I'm never okay with the leaving. I have abandonment issues. I am never okay with the leaving. I hate that. I hate that. And I, I saw it in something recently too, and I was like so mad. Yeah, I was gonna say, didn't we just read another book where like she gets this amazing orgasm and then he's like, okay, bye. Like, yep. He's like, I need to be away from you because I'm nothing but destruction or whatever. And he's mad at himself. Well, so come destroy this goddamn pussy and get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you even admit, like, uh, you just gave her a mind-blowing orgasm and you left her there to be in her head, like, a, all, like, so much. Like, I got so mad. Well, and he doesn't even say to her why he's leaving. He just takes off. He just takes why off. Why kidnapped? You don't know. <laughs> or he could right. be running away. <laughs> Who knows what the fuck's going on? He just leaves. Yep. And then the compound full of werewolves and he just ditches her. Bye. Again. Wes, get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> she is so frustrated. This is the part that I liked a lot that she's all like, fuck this shit. She takes a horse and she's like, I'm going home. Bye, <laughs> 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 <My> bitch. <laughs> Taking my orgasm and I'm going home. But of course, that doesn't really work out for her. She runs into someone from the Wild Eight and they attack and then... The pack finds her, and then the Wild Eight guy says that she's in on the whole scheme, and everybody's about to turn on her. And so she decides that she is going to pledge allegiance to (laughs) the Grey Wolves, and now everything's fine. (laughs) Son of my life. I pinky swear. (laughs) No, they're cowboys. They spit in their hand and shake. That's not Corona COVID safe. (laughs) (laughs) It's the opposite of social distancing. I'll spit on it. What they actually did wasn't Corona safe either with the slicing of the palms to to seal the deal. Well, what did you think about that? Like, so the whole packs turned against her because their enemy says that she is one of them, one of the enemy. And all she has to do is say, I, you know, swear fealty to the gray wolves. And they're like, oh, okay. All that has to happen is our newest member has to say that they accept you and you're in. That is so cool. What a coincidence. <laughs> the and newest again. member is Wes. <laughs> Who happened to have just given you the best mind-blowing orgasm and then walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Your notes are the same as my notes, Cassie. Because <laughs> literally, I was like, that's too easy. I said, like, that's too easy, like, a lot in here. That's too easy. This was another point where I was like Maverick is going to turn out to be like the major bad guy because he was the one that like put it put it in um uh Wes's head that like oh you you think she's innocent like are you sure she's innocent and not like he planted that seed he did and like now all of a sudden Mm -hmm. I'm like oh now they know it I'm like he is the bad guy (laughs) like I was so convinced that there were a couple of times too when I thought that he wasn't on above board but i was so um turned on it kind of didn't matter orgasms cut the mind i understand that yes so (laughs) it's not supposed to continue afterwards but anyway no she gets like like she gets her post-orgasmic clarity is as fuck this and leaves i mean (laughs) true she did she did Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they have that electric shock moment when they grasp hands with the their palms cut. Dun, 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 dun. They did mates. 
<laughs> I can wait. Is that how it happens? Apparently in most werewolf books. Yep. Either that or you see your fated mate getting his dick sucked by some girl. In pink panties. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually you get a matching mark with your fated mate. Yeah. Because you're fated mate. <laughs> like getting matching tattoos? Yes. Yeah. If you When you like consummate your matedhood, then you get the magical marks that match and that everybody knows. All right. So now she's protected by the pack and they don't have to worry about anything. And she can go back to her ranch and, you know, deal with her stuff. And this is the point where we should probably talk about the half turn fams because the thing that's been eating her flock is not werewolves like she thought. Vampires have been draining them dry. And the half-turn vamps are not full vampires, but it seems like the only thing that isn't really full vampires about them is that they're faster and stronger stronger and more insane. Insatiable (laughs) thirst, I think it was. That took me back to Twilight. Oh. And that whole, you're hungrier and more savage when you just turned into a vampire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really like the whole, oh, they're faster, they're strong. Like, pick a, pick a genre of vampire and stick with it. <laughs> like, are they half-turned? Because if they're half-turned, I would think that they're half-assed. And they would yeah, not be exactly. faster or stronger. Maybe well, they're, 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 they're not cognitive. So do they turn full vampire at some point i don't think so they can never be full vampires but they're also not like they don't keep their cognitive abilities they're now just an animal that's hungry and fast and so they don't last very long fast zombies yeah yeah, they're fast angry zombies so they're just an army of bloodthirsty killers essentially i think if i remember correctly yeah that sounds about right so pretty pretty badass weapon for no one to have ever tried to use before. But how are there not half breeds in, you know, the history of vampires or in the history of interactions with shapeshifters or whatever? It's like all of a sudden it's like this new machine or something that they created. And also I think if they're so uncontrollably hungry, what is stopping them from killing the other vampires? So how are they controlling? Yeah, these half turn like, vampires. There was a lot left to like in the open about like unpacked for yeah. sure. Do you like shock them? Like how do you control them? Do you like put a collar on them? I don't know. It was just one of those things where I'm like, um, yeah, it's it's weird it's a little it's super creepy like um it's creeped me out but at the same time like who's controlling them like how are you controlling these uncontrollable things Monster. that just want to feast mm-hmm. yeah and how do you get them to feast on her animals and not humans or her Unless they're or controlled her. somehow hmm. or maybe it wasn't half turned vampires eating her her flock maybe those were actual vampires that were in league with the wild eight but then there's half turn. Or draining or them and taking the blood back to the vampires? No, because no, they said it was the half-breed. It is a half-breed because it's in the video. Mm. And yeah. they're, like, right. they're like, what is wrong with this weird-ass vampire? And it's like, well, they didn't drain him all the way, so now he has a deformity, and this is how he is. And... Yeah. This is why. And everybody's like, wait, what? Like, like um... <laughs> Colt, you knew this the whole time? <laughs> Could you have mentioned this beforehand, friend? <laughs> Want to spill some of that knowledge, bud? Yeah, exactly. Oof. So, yeah, that's our that's our major, like, that's why everybody's so freaked out about going to war. Yay. Um, but Wes decides he needs more information, so that other surprise thing that we have is Midnight Ki- Coyote, Midnight Coyote and the magical binding brawls that happened Say in the that basement. three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> it sounds like a strip club. <laughs> it does. 
Mm-hmm. So what do you guys think about that whole scene there? It's either really smart or he's really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> or both. Yeah, I hadn't really decided. The, the binding thing is pretty cool, though. But, you know, he really, sh- when they were invaded, I guess, you know, that warlock guy or whatever he is, he should have concluded this binding and canceled it out since the fighting's over because they're being raided. So I didn't like that, but I also got that in the heat of the moment, it's not his priority. But I also kind of thought that if I were going to go to the trouble to make a magically binding fight spell, that I wouldn't have to do anything after that. I would make the spell and then I wouldn't have, I could go away and whoever won would win. And I wouldn't have to be there to pronounce a winner. Like, who gives a fuck what I think who won? They mm-hmm. know who won, right? Like, wouldn't the spell itself know who won if you well, were doing but it? but he has to be there to make sure it's a fair fight and no one else interferes. Like, what happens when they get raided and all of, whatchamacallit, they attack him. But I still think that the spell could do that. Like, if I'm going to the trouble to make the spell... I, I think I would just make the spell do all of that stuff. Like, if it's not a fair fight... And you would it- do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you would do that. But... <laughs> but then we wouldn't have a book. I don't know. <laughs> they don't finish their magically binding brawl, obviously. Nobody's a winner. He doesn't get the info he wants, which is when you guys mentioned Colt comes in and kind of... well. Colt comes in and says, hey, I just happen to know a whole bunch of shit. Let me tell you about it. (laughs) Um, Which was nice of him. Very nice of him. But the most important part is after they leave um, Midnight Coyote, these two finally get to fuck in a bed. They go to a hotel. <laughs> Ooh, I hotel can't, bed. I can't do barn trick and barn cow on the hotel. <laughs> you can, it's just not quite the same. <laughs> but yeah, so they go back to a hotel to hide out, and he's all like, "You, I'm such a bad dude," and she's all like, "Fuck me anyway," and he's like, "Okay." <laughs> I wonder if they got breakfast after, like the free breakfast. <laughs> I bet they did. Was it a La Quinta? I pictured it to be like a sleazy motel because they weren't in the great part of the city. Yeah. So I was like, I was thinking gross mattress, no breakfast. (laughs) A vibrating bed for 10 cents. (laughs) (laughs) I did not think about any of that, but thank you, Lisa, for putting it in my head. What takes home proof of this vampire menace and is once again punished. Nobody trusts Wes. Can't do nothing right. <laughs> <laughs> He's yep. doing more work than you are, asshole. <laughs> Can I just sit on his ass, bitch, please? He, he drops the bag and nobody looks into it. And they toss him in the slammer. And then Naomi gets all pissed off and gets tossed in the slammer with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised they put them together. I would have thought they'd separate yes. them. Yeah. They're not whoever did that isn't very good at punishment for sure. Then they fuck in the cell. And she's like, Oh, Cheeky. the guard come back any second now. And he's like, Let him. I I went and took my lunch outside. (laughs) (laughs) That was funny. (laughs) (laughs) In the heat of the moment, like, I don't care who watches. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. uh, I don't don't know until after that they were watching. Yeah, Yeah, it must be nice to be able to get out of your head like that. So they get it on, and uh, then she convinces the guard who had slipped out for his lunch that she does need to go talk to um, Maverick. And somehow she convinces Maverick that he's an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Which was sheer, like, chutzpah. With sheer yeah. moxie. <laughs> and and then Maverick just goes ahead and makes Wes his second command. Yeah, that's, that's, 
threw me <laughs> entirely. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, I'm so glad it happened. I loved it. I like, loved I've it. I almost killed you three times, but yeah, be my second in command. But what about Colt? Yeah. I feel bad for him. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then there's all this council war stuff, which may be me. Um, and then Wes learns that he thinks that um, Naomi has actually been on the side of the Wild Eight all of this time because he sees a picture of Donnie at her house. And then there is a very strange breakup scene. I don't think I've ever seen a breakup scene quite like that. What do y'all think of that breakup scene? Here's my favorite part of the breakup scene. Suddenly, she was against the tree. His hands plunged between her legs down the front of her jeans. He cupped the heat of her in his hand, his thumb locating the sweet bead between her legs within seconds. She cried out, pushing closer to him, the pressure of his callous thumb both wondrous and jarring, like the first touch after an orgasm. Immediately, she slickened for him, and from dark satisfaction, smirk on his lips. He felt it. Well, whatever. And then he says, did you do the same for him, for Donnie? That was fucked up. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was like, fuck you, motherfucker. It was such a, like, slut-shaming moment. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. Probably why we don't remember. We all blocked it out. I did not block it out. It is she not allowed to have a past, you know? She's never used her feminine wiles on him. That's never been something that we're talking about. And I know his past is that that other girl did that to him, like used him and manipulated him, pretending that she was in love with him and having an affair with him. Mm -hmm. It just seemed so extreme and like, just, just break it off. Just this, this is the part where I was like, and dry. <laughs> and now Candy is the Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a red flag. Like he loses his goddamn mind because there's a picture and he doesn't trust you in your words and that he's going to like look at this picture and draw all of his own conclusions. Like that is a huge red flag. It's the same as that other werewolf book where he's like, you looked at my friend, at my girlfriend weird, and now I'm going to turn on you and I'm going to break it and like, it's her fault. Yeah. <laughs> but I think in that book, they set a lot of things up where like wolves were really possessive. Like, I think if you set it up, like wolves has a naturally possessive instinct and this mm -hmm. is what will happen. And then when that happens and you're like, and that, and then that sort of thing happens, you're like, yeah, Okay. They set that up. And now this guy's just like, I'm an asshole because I just believe this picture. It doesn't say like, they're very, this guy, wolves are very possessive over their mate. There's none of that. He's just being a fucking asshole. And his first thought is to sexually assault her and shove his hands down her pants. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it is way That's terrible. But it's like he's punishing her by sexually assaulting her. Do you exactly. think maybe he's like bipolar? Oh, he is certainly something. <laughs> he needs to get therapy a hunt for sure. Trying to stop saying a hundred percent. He needs therapy for sure. Yeah, it's yeah, it's ugly. It's it's an ugly, ugly scene. Um, and I don't think it. I mean, I think it is in character for him, and I don't hate that it's in here. But yeah, it was rough. It was rough for me to read, and like I said, I was like, oh. Not so into Wes anymore. Yeah, no. I mean, I because I've been in an abusive relationship and that sort of shit happened mm -hmm. to me. So like, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, red flag, girl, run. Uh, 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 uh. So then, um, she tries to make it up to him by that she knew who Donnie was and didn't tell him that she knew who Donnie was because that's something apparently that she needs to make up to him. Um, by contacting the underground execution underground folks and helping get rid of the wild eight, but just gets her ass kidnapped again. <laughs> She's not wearing weights around her ankles. <laughs> she really does. 
girl smack dab in the middle of it. I love it. She didn't even get puppies or candy for it. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> smack her around. Yeah. So she gets kidnapped and then everybody goes to the rescue. What do you all think about this whole setup? The Her making up for it and all that. I think the kidnapping is kind of like same old, same old, put a white, put a knife to the woman's throat and threaten the guy to get him to cave. Yeah. It shows you how uncreative Donnie is. Like he is not ready to be a pack alpha for real, for real. (laughs) It's like, you guys remember uh, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer when the blonde girl whose name is... Harmony. When Harmony's trying to be a bad guy and she's like, I've got the best plan. And like Spike's like, what, you're going to kidnap one of her mates and make her come, whatever. And she's like, like I would tell you. And then she goes back to her minions and she's like, guys, I got a great idea. (laughs) (laughs) She was great. Donnie and Harmony have a very (laughs) similar bad guy method of thinking. (laughs) I'll just put it that way. The alphas are the real alphas are one step ahead of them and lets him play his little game and beat him at it. So they surround him and win the day. Dun, dun, dun. Who was surprised? I mean, Maverick wasn't the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Karen was surprised. Karen's so surprised that Maverick yeah, wasn't the bad guy. You want to track mine on this one? Uh, so it's all done. Naomi gets to actually go home. For real, for real this time. Uh, and Wes goes home and he's all chatting up with Maverick. And Maverick's like, I need you, man, and blah, blah, blah. And Wes is like, oh, I forgot to tell you, Naomi's actually my mate. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, shit, mate. Wolves mate for life, blah, blah, blah. And Maverick's all like, well... You can't have a human as a mate. And he's like, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so like, screw you, I'm keeping her. <laughs> Drag woman to your cave. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Like, I, I just liked how that situation went. Because he was like, well, I can't not have you here because we've lost people. So I guess you get to keep your woman, your human mate. So are we ready to fuck ourselves with Karen? Let's fuck ourselves with Karen. What do you got for us, Boo? I have a recommendation from Candy. <laughs> you went with that, huh? <laughs> I did. And no, I wasn't lazy. And I was like, oh, this is, no. I just kept coming back to it because I thought it was just so perfect. So a very, very, very expensive toy. <laughs> but I'm sure there's like interchangeable pieces for it. So it's like, you know, you can accessorize. Um, for this book, we picked the... Cowgirl Premium Remote and App Controlled Riding Sex Machine. What? <laughs> the hell? Say that again? <laughs> the Cowgirl Premium Remote App Remote and App Controlled Riding Sex Machine. Oh. Uh, okay. With a low, low <laughs> price of $1,295. That <laughs> sounds like more than an actual Sibian. With free Is it- yeah. Probably. You can't hide that in a drawer. No. This is not something that you would keep in your drawer. <laughs> Probably <laughs> in a bed in your closet. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, it's a sex machine. And you ride it like a cowgirl because that's really all that, like, there is to it. <laughs> Nothing else really makes it a cowgirl thing. It just looks like, a, I guess, like a saddle. Yep. But it's I used perfect. to watch Sibian porn so much when I was in my Me class. too. Oh, right? I love that stuff so much. Yes. Me too. A lot, a lot of Who that. It? Like somebody did a like downloading a it from LimeWire or whenever. <laughs> right? No, I had a Mac, so there was no chance I was getting a virus at that time. <laughs> I love that everything from they have a corded remote, or you can use a smartphone. Oh. Technology. Like smartphone is the way to go. Technology oh. is amazing. Remote distance the, feel me technology. Any and the Audi attachments. Mm-hmm. 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 See the look on the chick's face, the last picture. <laughs> Their mouth hanging open. 
Well, I mean, if you're spending that kind <laughs> well, of money. <laughs> you better have a mouth opening experience. <laughs> only two it's left glorious. in stock. Let's oh, order two. Left in stock. <laughs> and on Amazon, you can get it with um, uh, 12 months equal payments. Men can use it too, says the re- the review says men can use this machine for prostate simulation. That is second to none. Awesome experience. Five stars. Wow. So it's not just we'll for the ladies. Again. For everybody. <laughs> we'll sit here again. Five stars. I love this one. Uh, worth every dime I spent. Your lady will love this. I invited my lady friend over to view the new toy and she hit the mark three times in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's uh, some kind of friendship there. Yeah, lady friend. Friend. <laughs> and he's like, I don't even have to do any work. Here, <laughs> Here would you like to sit down? I'll get you a drink. <laughs> I have a special chair for you. It's a dick. That'll <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it was, it, I thought it would have just been fun to talk about this. And I'm glad, so glad that the Sibian porn did come up. <laughs> yeah. What is Sibian porn? Basically, it's the same machine with, it was a different attachment. Um, it's and, like the OG. It's like the OG of this. Yeah. And it, oh, like, okay. it vibrates like crazy. And like tricks would just sit on it and get off on it. But it was mm. very specific two Sibians. I think the reason I liked it so much is because it was one of the very few times, especially at that point, that you would see authentic female orgasms on pornography. Mm. And there, I think there's a little mm-hmm. more now than there used to be, but like then it was for real. Yeah, yeah like the back <laughs> hunched over, shaky, shaky, like <laughs> making weird noises, <laughs> unintelligible words. Yeah. Are you yeah. Just watching me? <laughs> <laughs> so when I first read it, I gave it a three. It was an okay book, you know, entertaining, whatever. I didn't get bored with it, but after talking about it, I changed it to two, and I changed it on my Goodreads page, too, to correspond. (laughs) So I gave it a two, because, yeah, the vampires really threw me. I don't know. Anyways, my five words are, dude, get a freaking grip. (laughs) For real. For real. (laughs) Well, of course, my rating is all about the orgasms. And, you know, there is only one part of this book that did not deliver in the orgasm area. It gets a four from me, orgasm wise. Pretty good and, for you, though. Yeah, because it was fucking sexy as hell. <laughs> and my uh, five words are hot sex and conflicted dude. <laughs> That's about right. I also actually really enjoyed this book. Um, I thought it was kind of, I thought it was very sexy. Um, I really enjoyed that first scene at the forest with Mm -hmm. the creepy hollowed out. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I really, really liked the scene. I liked the dynamic that they had. I liked how they were like the back and forth. And it was, I thought it was a lot of fun. It was a really fun book. Um, And so I gave it a four. Um, I do feel that, uh, I was a little jaded that, uh, again, Maverick wasn't the bad guy. <laughs> 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 uh, but, I, you know, I, I felt a little dissatisfied in that area, but, um, my five words, technically, yes, they are five, mm-hmm. is Cowboys, Prime Rib, and Big Dick. Priorities. That's giving priorities right now, right there. You cowboys feed me and big dick. My five words, cowboy wolf saves semi-warrior damsel. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a little bit interesting. Like she gets kidnapped 5,000 times, but she's a badass in part of the book. So I thought that, that's why I called her a semi-warrior. My, you know, my rating system is based on whether I would read the next book and I am not going to read the next book. Um, it was there were uh, so my, my rating is a three, but I'm I can't I don't think I can read in the next book. I had a lot of challenges with this book, and it's probably because the 
like I read it twice, but like a lot of the things like I was like, wait, when did that happen? And I had to relook it back up. And I don't know if part of that is because of the changing viewpoints and it just kind of threw my brain off a little bit mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, I really did like it. I thought it was a, a fine book. That's why it gets a three and not a two or a zero or a one. Um, but like, I don't think that this is a series that I can continue. It but- just needs more sex. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> more ch- hollowed out tree sex. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm writing that's that down. I'm taking this. Who can ever write a book like this? Let, let the creepy cat watch. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the old orange cat. <laughs> Karen's, writing, Karen's writing fan fiction right now. She's making notes. <laughs> <laughs> Where Maverick's a bad guy, <laughs> and the and the cat watches in the tree. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> You right. can find a log in the next book, so at least they're laying down. Yeah, there you go. A lot of exercise. Perfect. Well, the ranch hands. Next time on What the Smut, we're going to be discussing Priceless, a Riley Adamson novel, book one by Shannon Mayer. When things go bump in the night and children go missing, she is the last hope to bring them home. My name is Riley, and I am a tracker. When children go missing and the humans have no leads, I'm the one they call. I am their last hope in bringing home the lost ones. I salvage what they cannot. I'm on the FBI's wanted list. I have a werewolf for a pet, a witch of a best friend, and have no need for anyone else in my life. But when a hunt for a missing child starts to spin out of control, help comes from a most unexpected direction, one that is dangerously dark, brooding, and doesn't know a thing about the supernatural. One whose kisses set me on fire. Ooh. Ooh. What would you like us to read and review? Make your suggestions over on whatthesmut.com. 